Sean Curry joins us from Scranton Prep here on the Java Dola Show, continuing the conversation with boys soccer. And uh, Sean, let's talk about this year. Uh, graduate a lot of talent uh, from last year's team, but these guys seem like they're taking it in stride and saying, hey, I, I think we're kind of starting to hit a gear now. Um, as we get into October, how do you feel like your team has developed? I think we've developed some depth, whereas in the beginning of the year, we, we were struggling on that. Um, with the amount of kids that we graduated that were starters and major contributors, and, and uh, we were on a pretty good roll there for three years. Um, we knew that uh, there was going to be some changing in positions, and and uh, trying to develop a bench was going to be a little bit more difficult um, this year than in previous years. Also, the, the level of competition for us this year is, is much more increased. We're playing against much bigger schools. Um, so we're playing against teams that are also deeper and um, more technical and they're all very well coached so we knew that going into the season we were going to have to at some point develop some depth and, and so far so good. The seniors uh, seem like they've stepped up in that leadership role so talk a little bit about what it's like having these guys learn and then now take over and, and kind of fill that void. Yeah these, these seniors have been great. Uh, the senior class has been fantastic. Um, I, this real struggle that we were going to face this year was the potential of actually them losing for the first time. I mean, they've outside of state playoff games or um, district games, they hadn't ever lost a regular season game before. And we knew that moving up to a more competitive league that it was going to be very possible that we did. And we lost a couple and uh, to two very good teams, Juan Paul Beck and Abington. We've had a lot of close matches, but these seniors, they, they learned how to lose. And it's uh, that's a it's a hard lesson sometimes. And uh, that they've stood up as leaders. Um, on and off the field, um, they, they really uh, have been pushing the younger guys in practice and, and uh, really making sure that we're in a good spot when it comes to playoffs. What is it about the, the younger players that, that has helped this team? Talk about whether it's a freshman or a sophomore, guys like that that have kind of uh, stepped up their game that made you uh, the team that you are here. Is, you're starting to get a little bit excited, I'm sure, as, as the playoffs will be here in a few weeks. Yeah, I mean, the guys who are sophomores, um, we were able to get some good experience last year. With our schedule being a little bit easier last year, we were able to get a lot of those guys some good game experience and minutes that they needed. Um, the incoming freshmen walked into a situation where, where there's, a, there's a, been a tradition of winning, and um, sometimes that gets contagious, and, uh, and, and, or sometimes it gets overwhelming. And uh, the freshmen that we have um, this year have, have grabbed onto it and, and um, have worked their their butts off to try to continue that. They they don't want to let the team down, and and uh, and our, our seniors have put them in a good position where um, even if they they you know make a mistake here and there, we can clean it up. Defensively, let's talk about the difference defensively or offensively this year. Less goals this year thus far because um, you had some real goal scorers last year. Or defensively, are there some guys that have, have kind of stepped up? And, and your keeper as well. I know there's a lot of questions at once, yeah. but between the keeper, the defense, and the offensive output. We knew going into the season that we were going to have an inexperienced keeper. Uh, we graduated a, a fantastic keeper who um, over the last two seasons didn't let much in. Um, so first we knew we were going to have to bring along a, a young keeper, inexperienced keeper, um, very athletic, very teachable kid. But Colin Legg is a... Uh, he's a gamer um, and he's been working hard so we knew that we were going to try to minimize his opportunity to make those rookie mistakes as best we could. Um, we know that he's going to um, make mistakes now that he wouldn't make maybe at the end of the year um, or this year as compared to next year but um, so we, we first we wanted to try to protect him and limit the opportunities for mistakes. Defensively we had to kind of restructure a little bit because we graduated two fantastic defender, you know, center defenders last year and uh, Kenny Kinsel and Greg Fisher, who we talked to earlier, are, are fantastic with that. Um, Chris Curry and Jacob Brusak and, and Edelson Lopes uh, have, have also stepped up in the back for us. Um, so we've been in, in the back. We're fortunate we have a lot of guys that we can move around a little bit. They're all very technical and, um, and they've bought into the, the idea of the system of, of, that we play. And in the midfield and in the forwards and the attacking side of it, we graduated a lot of goals with Colin Myers. Um, and not only a lot of goals, but a lot of assists. I, he had like 80 goals and I think almost 50 assists in his, in his four years, which were unbelievable. Um, but guys like Alec Butner and, and Corbin White and Spencer Keel and Blaze Whitehead and Edelson again, fast steady. He's, they, they've, they've stepped it up and, and uh, they attacked the goal. Um, we are playing against better defenses than we played with in the past. So it's been more challenging. 
but uh, we, we certainly don't stop trying. Let's talk about the, the opportunity in the playoffs, where you guys are going to compete and how you may stack up against other Lackawanna conference teams or well, a Wyoming Valley conference teams for that matter when the playoffs hit. Yeah, we're excited to see how this new format works. Um, right now we're, we're in the top in terms of seeding um, with uh, this new point system that they're using. Uh, we know that Sam, uh, Wyoming Sam was fantastic, Myers was fantastic. Uh, we're right up there. Um, you know, we're right now kind of fighting for those top three spots in, in the seating. Um, in terms of Lackawanna schools, we're, we're competing in, against all AAA and, double, and uh, Quad A schools right now. So we haven't seen a lot of the AA schools. Um, we know that Lakeland's always strong when it comes to playoff time. Um, Tom does a great job with them. So we know um, that uh, we're going to see probably Lakeland, Myers, Sam down the road, um, all very capable of um, you know beating you or pulling an upset at any time. So we're we're hoping that we peak at the right time. Um, but uh, but we, we we do know that uh, the reason that we went up and played the, the, the quad and AAA schools is because we were we were looking to prepare a younger, lesser experienced team for districts, and hopefully it pays off. Sean, always a pleasure to, to catch up with you and pick your brain a little bit about the, your team and uh, keep up the great work with uh, the Scranton Prep Boys soccer team. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure. Greg Fisher is with us here on the John Mandola Show. We're talking Scranton Prep soccer. And uh, Greg, let's talk a little bit about how things are going so far in the fall for you guys. Oh, it's great. Um, we're, right now, we're kind of hitting our stride in the middle of the year. Um, we're playing really well as a team. We're figuring out the kinks. We've got a lot of new guys. Graduated all the way up the middle, Gary Robleski, Colin Myers, Santo Salako, Sam Bednars, and Antron on the wing. So uh, we had a big core to fill, uh, sophomore goalie, Colin Legg's doing a great job. We're helping him along, but he's really doing well. Um, but we're definitely on par with our expectations for this year. A couple games didn't go our way, but we're a resilient bunch and doing well. Let's talk about the coach and what he leans on you and says this is what you need to do game in and game out. Coach Curry definitely gives us a pretty long leash, or me a pretty long leash and uh, kind of leading the guys. M Mario, Brotel and I can kind of like pre-game, talk to the team, get our words in. Coach is really good about having the seniors talk to the team before or after he says what he needs to do and takes care of logistical things. So I think he it's awesome and allowing us to develop our leadership skills as well as him managing a team. You guys, uh, you're saying you're hitting your stride right now, a lot of replacement of guys. Let's talk about the things you think you still need to work on as the playoffs will be approaching in just a couple of weeks. So in our game, the, the speed of play oscillates tremendously, which is unfortunate, but I mean, it's fortunate when it's high because when we're clicking, the ball is moving, it's whipping around. Uh, but when it's low, we kind of get in points if we're up or kind of in the plateau of the game of sorts, it kind of just gets stagnant and we, we stop moving. So I, I guess sometimes we get a little complacent in the midfield or in the back with a ball that we would otherwise normally take care of promptly Not now and we just don't. So I think we just got to fix stay focused more in the meat of the game. Let's uh, shift forward to the spring where you play lacrosse. Yeah. Uh, that's something you're pretty darn serious about. So yeah. we talk about the, the game of lacrosse. Oh, that's my thing. Um, so lacrosse is pretty up and coming in the area. I, this may be our seventh year. Uh, Preps had a pretty good team. We lost in the district championship, unfortunately, last year. My good friend, Anthony Caparicio and the Crestwood Comets, uh, they had a great team. But um, this year we're looking to have another great year. Kyle Rayner is returning in that He's uh, committed to Mount Union College so, or University, so um, looking for him to have a strong year. We got a lot of new faces on the offense. We graduated four out of six. Uh, or mi the midfield: Daniel Hinton, Luke Johnson, and then Joe Petnato down at attack. So we have some some sh big shoes to fill, but I'm confident that Coach Knowles will whip us up in time for the year. And we'll be ready to go. Let's talk about that next step for you. It is going to be lacrosse. So yeah. tell us about where you're going and why you decided to go there. So Roanoke College in Virginia is where I've chosen to commit to play lacrosse. Um, I went down there. Bill Pilot is the head coach. He's been there forever. I think he, he got his 300th win in March of 2015. So he's been there for ages. He, he really knows what he's doing. It's an established program. And I was just on campus. Um, it's gorgeous down in Virginia. The mountains surround the field. and. I was woke up and was like, this feels like home. I could go play lacrosse right now, and that was it. Well, congratulations. It's uh, great to get that over with. 
Thank you very much. And, yeah. a, and a nice step it's, it'll be for you. Let's talk about your siblings. You have two of them. Yep. Um, John and Dan Fisher. John plays freshman football at North Pocono, and Dan does every, he swims, soccer, uh, lacrosse at Wyoming Seminary. Great kids. John is smart as a whip. Dan is one of the funniest kids I know. He's 12. Kid never fails to make me smile. And he's going to be a freak athlete. He's already up to my nose. The kid can play basketball. With. It's pretty impressive. Let's talk about your dad as a, as a role model oh, yeah. while you look up to him. My dad, um, my dad was in the military in Germany um, in the 90s before they had me and before they moved, my parents moved back to the States and had me and uh, some of the, uh, the values that he was in, instilled with in the military have kind of transitioned over whether he intended to or not into when he was raising me just integrity and being a man first and sticking to your guns. I mean, put, no pun intended, but just to kind of have your integrity and be truthful and stick with your action. Don't lie about anything. So, well, it's great to hear that uh, you have that. You're yeah. pretty darn fortunate, yeah. that's for sure. Extremely fortunate. And uh, we wish you the very best going forward, Greg. Good luck Thank down in Roanoke. Much. I appreciate it. Ken Kinsel with us here on the John Mandola Show. And uh, Ken, let's talk about your role on the team. What's Coach expect out of you? Obviously, to uh, just be a, a leader. Um, I mean, uh, I've had a pretty considerable amount of experience playing. I've played for a really long time, and. Uh, I mean, a, a, a lot of the younger kids just ask me for advice a lot of times, and uh, even if it's not soccer related, I mean, I, I try to help them out as much as I can. So, um, yeah, and uh, other than that, just win games. So, keep it simple. Not easy to win games when you graduate uh, a lot of talent from last year, but yeah. how about guys stepping up this year? Who are some guys you think they've stepped up as younger players and um, taken over the role? Yeah, we definitely had a couple. Uh, a couple of kids that absolutely just kind of came out of nowhere. I had no idea they would really uh, step up. Uh, like uh, Chris Penatar, uh, he's a sophomore, um, having a great season. I mean, I didn't really expect him to step in at all like that. Um, a lot of underclassmen, uh, Chris Curry, uh, coach's son, a uh, good player, really stepping up, helping us out in the back. Um, uh, and. Uh, Antonio Depolonio uh, stepping in and scoring goals when uh, I, we, we didn't really expect it from him, but he's kind of a little dude, but um, he's been playing real good lately. So, Talk about being a, a student athlete at uh, Scranton Prep and dedication as a student and, and be able to do other things. You do track as well, so yeah. you have to be pretty well-rounded and uh, you're fitting the mold, huh? Yeah, I try. Um, coming from like a public school, um, it was more, uh, I don't know, they give you a little more leeway with uh, the, uh, the if you're an athlete in terms of athletics, but uh, at prep that doesn't it, it's just not as much of a factor there. Uh, they try and hold everybody to the same standard, and um, I think it's definitely made me better in both both aspects of my life because I really have to uh, focus and try as hard as I can to stay afloat and uh, not get bogged down and uh, lose it. So biology and Latin, a couple subjects you do talk about the, why you enjoy them. Um, Biology, uh, I just like animals. Um, just, I always thought animals were cool. Uh, the little stuff like uh, all the cells and boring stuff like molecules, not that much fun, but I've always liked just uh, nature and stuff. I've always felt real close to it, so, you know, it's fun. Interesting path for you, uh, the next step, so talk about what you want to do. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Well, a lot of people uh, think I'm kind of crazy, and they don't even really think it's like a real thing, but uh, underwater welding, <laughs> yeah. So um, it's uh, kind of dangerous, which is why not many people do it. But uh, I mean, I don't care. I like it, It's interesting, and it sounds pretty cool to me, so it makes a lot of money, too. Anybody so. inspire you with that, or just something you kind of like you found? You, you the adventurous type to begin with? To be completely honest. Uh, so I'm a lifeguard, and uh, this uh, I work with like a lot of kids in college. And this one girl, um, she's like kind of, she's had like 15 different majors, and uh, it's like finally the thing she settled on. Like, and I was working with her one day, and she's telling me all about it. I'm like, that sounds pretty cool. So I'm like, why not do that? So I figured, and I mean, she told me all about it, and like how it's like about how much it pays and stuff. I'm like, doesn't sound bad. So. <laughs> Well, yeah. Give it a shot. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Not. not too many underwater welders uh, that you ever meet, but uh, it's nice to hear. How about some people in your corner, people out there watching you play or, or rooting you on in the classroom as well? Um, 
obviously my parents uh, have always been there for me ever since uh, I've been a little kid. Um, um, How about your brother? My brother plays North Pocono, so yeah, a uh, little bit of competition there. He doesn't really want me to win too much, but I mean, actually that drives me a little bit more, so. It's good to hear. Yeah. Well, Ken, it uh, sounds like you got your act together. We wish you the best with the underwater welding and everything else you do in your future. Thank you. Mario Rotel joining us here from Scranton Prep. We're talking about the soccer team and uh, under Coach Curry. Um, let's talk about the, your senior year. What's it, uh, what's it been like for you so far here as we get ready to, to hit October pretty hard? Uh, yes, it's been very fun uh, going by very fast. Um, very enjoyable. So. What do you like about this year's team? Um, I like that. Mostly our seniors, we've been playing together since freshman year. Some of us have been playing together since before then on travel teams. And um, I just like our senior leadership and our younger guys are coming along very well. You guys haven't won every game, but talk about the experiences that you've had this year and, and trying to make it important when it matters, which is when the playoffs come around. Um, yes, um, I'd say this year has been a bit of a struggle for us um, in terms of uh, our losses. We've struggled and uh but it's it's you get more out of a loss i'd say than a win sometimes so it's helped us let's talk about playing center mid uh, and the guys around you and who's able to put the ball in the net um well i usually find um my other captain uh alec Butner. um i also look for my guys on the outside edelson lopes and um uh blaze whitehead and i always find our top of the triangle uh spencer keel Play basketball as well. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you enjoy about that? Uh, same thing. I love the guys. They're amazing. Um, coaches are great, and I just love the sport. Couple of siblings, uh, both older. So tell us about each of them and uh, how they've influenced you. Uh, my sister. Um, she's uh, 24. Um, she is in college right now. She just finished her gr uh, graduate degree. She's getting her master's now. Um, she's hardest. She's the hardest working person I know. Uh, my brother, same thing with him. Um, just getting his master's now, too. He's 23, and they've he's played sports. My sister didn't play sports, but uh, he played basketball and soccer, too. Latin and psychology, a couple subjects you like. Uh, yeah. Is it the teacher, or is it the subject matter? What do you enjoy? Um, I, I like both. Both of my teachers, are. I like them a lot. They're, uh, they're really um, open to talking, and they're just fun to have in class. Pre-med major at the next level, so we'll talk about where you want to go. You have a thought yet? Um, right now, I'm thinking local, so mostly like University of Scranton. Let's talk about your mom and your grandfather as a couple of role models. Uh, my mom, um, she's no, she is the hardest working person I know. Um, she is constantly 24/7 working, um, and she will never miss one of my games. She'll move everything out of her out of her schedule to come and see me play, and at really. Um, Really admire for that. Um, my grandfather, he's the nicest person I've ever met. Um, every person I've, every person that knew, knew him, uh, always said that he really brightened up the day, and I strive to be like him every day. Well, thanks for telling us your personal story, Mario. Uh, the best of luck in the, the pre med track, okay? Thank you. Alec Butner here on the John and Dola Show. He is a senior and uh, wrestler, football guy, track and field. You're a busy fella. Uh, let's first talk about the soccer field. Playing forward and uh, your job uh, out there on the team, what's Coach Curry expect of you? Um, he really expects me to be a leader out there. I mean, I'm one of the captains along with the um, other kids you just interviewed. And he, they really like look on me to distribute the ball, score when it's necessary, um, lead the team mostly. That's about it. Let's talk about that left foot of yours. Um, I have to use uh, my left foot mostly because I had an injury at the beginning of the season. It's healed now, so I can use my right foot. But towards the beginning of the season, um, the injury was like really affecting my right from left. So I'd use mostly left. I'm full health now, so I can use both again. Finally, thank God. And let's talk a little bit about over on the football field how you're able to utilize that. Um, well, I kind of like grew up. My dad made me. Um, learn how to use both feet so when I injured it at the beginning of the season with two sports that I need both my feet for or mainly my right um, I thought it was going to be really bad so I came to football practice the one day and I was like coach I don't know if I'm going to be able to kick this year and um, 
I was like, I could try kicking lefty because my first year kicking, I kicked lefty a lot of the season. I switched depending on where I was in the field. And um, it turned out being just as good as my right on the football field. So that turned out to work really well for me. Not many people could ever do that. So you're in the less than 1% uh, to pull that off. Talk about the, the bond that you have with the football team compared to the bond you have with the soccer team. It's probably just different, it yeah. might be the word. Yeah. Um, the main difference is uh, most of the kids on the soccer team I grew up with, I played soccer with them for my whole entire life. Um, like Mario, I played with, with them since I was six. Same thing with Greg, Kenny. Most of these kids that I'm around for soccer I've been with since I was a very young child. Um, for football, I started my sophomore year and I was friends with a lot of the kids on the team so it wasn't really that hard of a transition. Um, but. Most of the kids on the football team I didn't know until my years at prep. Let's talk about the weight you wrestle at and uh, how successful you've been on the mat. Um, I went basically undefeated last year going into districts. I lost in the district finals, so I took second. And I lost one match going into districts. Um, I wrestled 160 last year. I'm planning on wrestling 82 or 70 this year. I wish the best there. How about track and field? Some. Uh different events that you compete in? Um, I mainly do javelin. I know how to like throw other objects, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to like... Legal objects, of yes, course, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. All right. With, you know, Halloween and Mischief Night coming up, we, wanna, yeah, no, we don't want to get into that. No throwing. Uh, let's talk about the two sisters. That, or, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, two sisters, right? Yeah. Again. When I first looked, I saw Butner. I'm thinking, was that brother? Okay. <laughs> let's talk about your two sisters. Um, they both grew up playing soccer also, I've, like Ava, it, that's the older one, she's 15 years of age, she goes to prep too, she plays on the girls soccer team, she's been starting since she was a freshman, and I really like, she's like one of the people I look up to because if it wasn't for her I don't think I'd be as competitive, because growing up in the house it was, Ava was always the fastest child, so it was like my goal to become faster and faster, so most of the things that have like happened to me over the years I like to give her the credit for those. And, uh, how about Aubrey what's she up to? Aubrey she plays soccer too she plays for an all-boys travel soccer team um, she's she's still younger she isn't in high school yet but hopefully she could live up to us eventually. Math and science couple of subjects you like and you, you plan on doing engineering down the road talk about the where you want to go to school far away close to home? Um, I really like Colgate. It was it's one of my top schools um, in Fordham. I really like Fordham, and I was looking at Syracuse a little bit, but right now it's really Fordham and Colgate. Your dad uh, is very important to you. He's a role model. Tell us uh, why you look up to him. Um, he never lets me down. I know he's always there for me on the field and off the field. And if it wasn't for him, the amount of times that I probably would have given up, or there, there's a lot of times I probably would have given up if it wasn't for him. And he makes me stick in stick in with it and always comes out in the future to be good for me. Well, Alec, thanks for sharing your personal story and uh, best of luck if the future sounds bright. Thank you.